Rabindra Sachdev. I run a private think tank known as the Imagine India Institute or Image India Institute. Because we believe your image is a derivative of your imagination. If you imagine something good and perform on it, your image should go up. So that's why we've named Imagine India or Image India. I'm just waiting a minute. OK, thank you very much. Uh, we've had wonderful you know, speakers before me, and they highlighted some very, very pertinent points, I think, to which some of us are aware or definitely needed to be reminded, mm -hmm. right? Uh, I was actually not so surprised by the topic when I got the topic because of two counts, because you know I'm, we are pretty active in the diaspora globally and uh, having known the wonderful, wonderful work that Seva International does and Shamji does uh, all across the world. So I could understand that perhaps what uh, the thought here is that how to link the diaspora with the Himalayan region. That was my take on it. And sure, yes, uh, you know, the experts and areas of SDGs and resilience and disaster management, all of that are being covered, I think, in the next two days and various sessions, right? So my little take that I've made is on how to engage the diaspora. And the previous speaker also mentioned some very interesting points. And of course, you know, diaspora as your ambassador. But the point is, what is the story your ambassador will tell? You have to create a story a trans-Himalayan or whatever story that your diaspora can sell. So create a story, give to the diaspora, and then your ambassadors can sell, even if they have the goodwill. And of course, in diasporas, while he was talking, I can understand there are two kinds of diasporas you can also see as. One are people of Himalayan origin who are across the world. Okay, That's one diaspora, I'll say, Himalayan diaspora globally. One is the wider Indian diaspora, Nepali, Bhutan diaspora, who are across the world, but have but do not have their origins in the Himalayas, right? So there are two kinds of diasporas: one who originally came from the hills and mountains and went, and the other are the, these others. So for both of these segments, in a way, we have to perhaps adopt a different strategy, a different outreach. Now that said, I'll quickly run through. Yeah, my first slide, please, sir. Thank you. OK, I'll talk about some diaspora public diplomacy. And then I have some concrete specific points because I thought the idea is also you know, implementation solution. So I have some very basic, simple action items that could be perhaps taken up. Thank you, please. OK, little bit to give our background so you see where I'm coming from. We are a think tank and an incubator. My background is engineering. I'm into international affairs, but I've been a technology entrepreneur also. So that's why when we approach these things, we approach a little bit more from entrepreneurial approaches also. So we, we do advocacy, lobbying, etc. We are running a global campaign right now. In fact, I'll just mention about it briefly. We'll come back to it later. Live and let live. There is no other way for humans, nations, and man in environment other than to live and let live. If we don't let Mother Nature live, Will she let us live? So it has to be a coexistence. So this live and let live campaign is actually a broader campaign, not only environment, an overall global campaign. And within it, there's the lemonade movement about which I'll talk. There's a saying in English, when life gives you a lemon, make lemonade. That is, when you run into any difficulties, try and figure out something out of that. So the idea of the lemonade movement is it's a movement for motivation and hope. The world of today, especially the youth, there's a lot of darkness or dark future or fears ahead. We need to spread motivation and we need to spread hope. Hope is the number one thing that brings progress and keeps us all going. Uh, we engage in media, commentary, analysis, world affairs, etc. We worked in diasporas the past 20 years, including in the United States, where the group which I am a co-founder, we are rated as the most influential in the last 90 years in the US. Uh, Shamji would a little bit know, and he has, of course, much contributed to our, he's been a mentor also and a very well-wisher also. Next, please. So that's a brief background. So now we'll dive into more. Next. Okay, I use the term public diplomacy by meaning uh, people to people. See, the governments do their work, Public diplomacy, to my mind, is that what people do across cultures, right? So if here we are looking at 
something between the diasporas, be it Himalayan origin, be it Indian origin, Nepali origin, but those diasporas, how can they be connecting back to the trans-Himalayan region? The most fundamental thing to my mind is people-to-people -people connectivity. The more we can create that, or methods of that, the more you can create some synergies and progress or whatever. So here I've listed out some examples of public diplomacy, just as samples, which may, I mean, this is a samvad, a discussion, right, to kind of collectively think. So like, I mean, science diplomacy, for example. You know, we've been working on an initiative uh, with the Netherlands on the origins of zero. Some people there were very fascinated with zero. We said, okay, guys, come on, let's research. And we set up people-to-people -people exchanges, academics and all, etc., around the origins of zero. Right? So you need to create reasons to bring people together. Cultural diplomacy with the United Arab Emirates, you know, when Sheikh Zayed, their founder, uh, Sheikh died, we asked them or we suggested to Indian government, see, as public diplomacy, we work or we push all governments wherever to issue a commemorative stamp in his honor. I mean, what does it take us? You issue a stamp in honor of a leader of their country, they'll be happy. Okay, so yes, it ended up happening, but it was a joint stamp for Gandhiji and Sheikh Zayed, which was issued as a commemorative stamp. Uh, North South Korea, peace diplomacy. I'm actually on a peace subcommittee for peace between the North and South using the Winter Olympics. The last time, you know, uh, Trump and Kim met was after. Kim's sister met Vice President Mike Pence at a Winter Olympics in North, uh, South Korea. It created some thaw. So now again, South Koreans are thinking of creating a thaw. So these are some examples I'm giving in terms of, I mean, of course, these are things that we are doing or have done, but to share with you that there can be various ways of slicing and dicing the salami. Next, please. Now coming to diaspora and, <coughs> sorry, the Himalayan region. We've done something little. Uh, I'm born in Dehradun, Sutrakhan. My engineering is Pantanagar, so that's another part of hills. So I'm a child of the Himalayas and worked in diasporas. Anyway, so during COVID, we also put together panels of Indian American doctors and we arranged Facebook Live in five districts in Uttarakhand, Bageshwar, Pithoragar, Terry, Dehradun, etc. And we got 300, 400 people together sitting in Delhi or wherever. You know, getting 300, 500 people on a Facebook Live is, I mean, maybe easy, but it takes some work to do, right? So these Indian American doctors would come and ask, answer questions or counseling to the people who were affected. Next, please. So that's the past. Now, broadly speaking, the diaspora, I mean, one, it could be charity philanthropy. Another, it could be entrepreneurship. Another, it could be partnerships across a range. We don't know, agri, tourism, whatever, etc. In multiple, you, you can look at buckets. Next, please. Now, here are some three concrete specific ideas. And Shamji mentioned about G20 in his, uh, you know, keynote speech at the inauguration. And this is something which I tossed with him also some months ago. He would perhaps recollect. What we are planning is that when the G20 summit leaders meeting is happening in Delhi, we will create a diaspora 20. We are reaching out to diasporas in these 20 countries, 19 countries plus European Union, right? Political leaders, business people, media leaders, etc., and suggesting and bringing them here in planning stages that when the official G20 is happening, we would be able to get some people from these G20 countries to come to Delhi. In this, of course, I invite SEVA International's leadership and partnership, sir. And uh, also, we would invite then some people from the Himalayan region. Come, let's bring some people from the Himalayan region also and participate if this diaspora 20, more or less, we should be able to do it. That's one concrete. The second is, again, <coughs> sorry, G20. The G20 has various working groups. Finance ministers, central bankers, parliament 20, etc., etc. They do not have a children 20 also. Now, I sit on the board of an organization known as Children's Book Trust in Delhi, which owns the world's largest doll museum, the Shankar's Doll Museum also. We publish children books, Panchsantara and all of that. So we decided, why don't we do a children 20? So the children 20 that we are planning to do in Delhi, we will be reaching out to children of the expatriates who are living in Delhi. 
you know, you have Americans, Japanese, Koreans, embassies, and uh, expats working in Delhi. We'll reach out to them. We'll get their children. Supposing we get, we are estimating around 600 to 1,000 children we can get. We just did an on-the-spot painting competition with 5,000 children. Shankar's on-the-spot painting competition, anyway. So we get around 1,000 or so these foreign kids. And because India is also a member of G20, so we bring equal number of Indian kids together for an art event. So this we are definitely planning around March. In this, we could again invite, it will be a pleasure, why not get some kids from Himalayan region, some schools here, to come and also participate with these kids at this art event. The third thing, again a concrete thing, uh, there's an organization which takes about 40, 40 to 50 American students, college youth, every year to different countries, two or three countries, and they stay there for a month, and they practice with local youth music, and at the end of a month, they do a joint concert. So this organization, uh, of somehow knowing or whatever, so next year they're planning to bring one group to India. So why not? There's a potential. Uh, they, they look at three cities, every country. So like in India, they'll be here for three months. One month, Delhi. Maybe one month, we can have it in some university anchored in the Himalayan region, and one other month in some other place. Thank you. Next. I'll finish quickly now. Oh, yes. One unique project in social entrepreneurship, air, water. I'll just come to that. Next, please. Basically, the idea is that imagine, innovate, package the story, sell the story, create a pipeline of interested candidates, right? Measure so that they can measure their returns also, what they're wanting. Storytelling or the profitable outcomes. PR is not PR image making. PR is perform and report. Forget what PR media says. PR is perform and report. IPR, imagine, perform, report. Next, please. A quick two points. See, again, I think earlier speaker said, we have to reimagine or refresh or recreate or create a picture or image of this region, the trans-Himalayan region. Is it, can we say it's like the necklace of India? Or if not India, let's say of this region. Is it a garland of our region? We have to create that imagination in the minds of the diaspora or the wider world. Then you will get more attention, perhaps. It's something like uh, Shamji and others were mentioning, you know, India's wisdom. Okay, G20 will see India's wisdom. It's like Intel inside. So in G20 going ahead, remember there used to be computers with Intel inside chip. So it's a good computer, right? So India's wisdom, perhaps it's coming from Himalayan inside, Himalaya inside the spirituality, the culture, the traditions, all of that. So some of that packaging we have to do, I would think. Yeah, apply. Another thing, of course, coming back, uh, this overall uh, sense or a culture of motivation and hope in the region. Let's be motivated. Let's have hope. We can, whatever be the difficulties we have, right, uh, which are uh, given to us, Mother Nature, the you know the various terrains and the geography, it's there. Let's make lemonade from this. Next, please. I think last maybe. Yeah, ah, this is something again a concrete project. You know there is technology out there which creates water from air moisture. It's functioning technology. Why not we create? air water of the Himalayas and sell it branded in upscale hospitality in the rest of the country and export it also. Right now what's going from Himalayas from you know springs and original sources, air water from the clouds of Himalayas. Imagine the story you can create. Next please. And last point, end of the day we have to live and let live as we say. I mean as uh, of course we push more in geopolitics and all etc. And of course, we do understand there, I mean, I do engage quite a lot in geopolitics. Uh, there are, you know, frictions and tensions and different understandings between the countries in this region. Could we think that sometime in future, at least some of these disputed areas be looked at or converted as gardens of peace? Thank you.